Okay, let's talk about using randomization to estimate average treatment effect. Remember, in the previous video, we were interested in knowing the effect of a career training program within a particular community. We discussed having members of the community participate in the career training program, and then since the best comparison is oneself, we had the community members go back in time and experience life without the career training program. The difference in the average income with and without the career training program is the average treatment effect. Now, in reality, one cannot go back in time to experience life both with and without the career training program. Each person can either participate or not participate in the career training program. So, realistically, we can observe the income for a group of individuals that participate in the career training program, and we can observe the income for a different group of individuals that do not participate in the career training program. The difference in the average income for those that participated in the program and those that did not participate in the program is the average treatment effect, right? Wait. Not so fast. What if those that participated in the career training program are fundamentally different than those that did not participate in the program? For example, people that participate may be harder workers than those that choose not to participate. This is where randomization is going to fly in and save the day. There are a lot of ways that we use randomization to estimate average treatment effect. The simplest randomization scheme involves two stages. In the first stage, we randomly select members of a community or some population of interest to participate in our study. Why do we do this stage? Well, we want to generalize our results to the entire population of interest, and that may be a lot of people, maybe hundreds, thousands, millions. Usually, it is not practical to observe outcomes on everyone in the population. A randomly selected sample from the population of interest will hopefully represent the population, meaning they will have similar races, similar family sizes, incentives to work, and any other factors that may affect the outcome. In this case, that would be their income. Once we have a randomly selected sample, the second stage is to randomly select who gets the treatment or career training program and who does not get the treatment. Why do we randomize who gets the treatment? The idea is that, random, that due to randomization, each group will be similar and we won't have the problem where one group has harder workers or there's some fundamental differences between the two groups. At the end of the study, we compare the average income for those that completed the career training program to those that did not complete the career training program. The difference between these groups is our estimated average treatment effect. This sounds awesome, right? Randomization saves the day. Not so fast. While randomization appears to be the magic bullet for our problem, in reality it is very difficult. Randomly assigning who gets a treatment and who is left without can be politically difficult since those that are not given the treatment will be upset that they were not provided with the same opportunities as their peers. Another big issue with this randomization scheme is called the spillover effect. Perhaps those that received the career training uh, program got positions where they were then able to train other employees so that the effect of the career training program spilled over to those that did not have access to the program. Compliance is also a large problem with randomization. If the career training program is difficult, then perhaps lazier people, people with less earning potential, may drop out of the study. These are just some complications of implementing this simple randomization scheme to estimate average treatment effect. In future videos, we will discuss other methods to estimate an average treatment effect which attempt to address these practical concerns with randomization.